This week is going to get interesting. Um, you can really start to see the power of MATLAB when you start using M files to do slightly complex operations. And we're also going to look at some plotting. So the topics for today. Um, yep, my contact details. Topics for today are using M files. So M files are how you can store your own programs, your own data in MATLAB and use it again. So rather than using the command window all the time, you can create your instructions in a separate text file, a separate M file, and then run them in MATLAB. We're also looking at input and output, how to get user input and show output for calculations. How to develop algorithms so you can solve common engineering equations and then plotting some results. Last week we were using the command render to put all the information in. So we could, for example, define a variable called current. We could define a variable called voltage. And we could multiply them together to give, you should know this, power. So power is equal to current times voltage. But we can also write an M file. We can put this information into a separate file and then run it as a discrete operation. To do that, either select new script or go to new and script, and that will open up a little text window. So I'm going to use my little command history here to save a bit of time. Drag in the uh, two variables and then drag in the operation and then I want to display that answer there so I'll save this as my power calc m file and I can close it down It'll be saved in my current folder, so this should be your H drive again. If I drag it into the command window, it will run that program and it will give me only the value that has been calculated. I could open up this again and it can open up docked. If you want to undock it, if you click uh, the little symbol in the top right hand corner, click undock it becomes a separate window that you can move around. I prefer to dock it personally. Keeps it all nice and neat. You can put it above your command list. You can see everything at once. Uh, so if I wanted to change the current value then, I could change that to a different number. Let's change it to 13. Make sure you save it each time you change your M file. This little star indicates that you haven't saved the most recent changes. So I'm going to save that. The star disappears. If I want to run it, rather than dragging and dropping it, another way of doing that is to type the name of the M file in. So I'm going to type in power calc, press enter, and it's going to give me the value of power again. Now, what if I wanted the user of the program to define the value of current and voltage? and then give me the answer for the power. Well, I can do that by using an input structure. I'll type current is equal to input open brackets and then the text you want to give the user, the user prompt for the input. So I'm going to write enter value of current in amps. And then for the voltage, We'll take the same structure and I will save that. Now when I run this program, it's going to actually ask me for the variables to be used. I'm going to make a little change to this program because you'll see that there's no space here. So when I put my values in, it's just not very neat. It's, it's perfectly valid, valid. It's not very neat. So I'm just going to add a colon and space 
and leave that space there between the text and the comma, uh, the inverted comma. So let's run that again. Enter the value of current in amps, let's say 10 amps and 22 volts. And then it's going to compute to that power value for me. You can see this could be really useful in the rest of your modules. You can create your own little scripts to perform regular problems that you get with typical equations. Perfectly valid to do that, it's not cheating, it is actually a really good use of MATLAB. Um, and you can get a lot more done by using tools like this, do take advantage of it. A good habit to get into is annotating your scripts. So I'm going to put a percentage sign and then I can give myself some scripts. If, if you put a percentage sign, then MATLAB will ignore everything to the right hand side of that percentage sign. It will perform these operations, but it will ignore anything written here. So you can use it to write little notes to yourself to remind you what each step does. So prompt user for current value. And then annotate that line and say it's what that's asking to do is prompt user for voltage value. And when you do your coursework at the end of this course, one of the things you will be marked on is how well you annotate your scripts. So make sure you're in the good habit of doing this. It's very good practice. If you're coming back to a script a year later, five years later, or if you're passing it on to somebody else who hasn't written the script, who's just using what you've written, it is um, very good practice to give good annotations so everyone can understand exactly what each step is doing. In section two, you look at um, matrix algebra. So let's start a new M file and have a look and see what the rules are for that. I'm going to create two matrices, one called Neo, and from what I'm typing you should be able to tell the size and shape of that matrix, have a little think, and I'm going to make another one called Trinity. So I've got two matrices here. If I save that, I'm going to call this matrix algebra for now. And I'm going to run it. If I run it, watch what happens in the workspace. And remember that I can run it by either dragging and dropping it from here to the command window. I can type the name of the M file, but I can also run it here by clicking this green arrow. So it's run matrix algebra and it's now got those two values in the workspace. If I want to just do a simple operation, if I want to add or subtract, divide, multiply, raise to the power of a single number, a single scalar value, I can do that easily. So I could make a new variable called uh, Neo one, and I'm going to add a value of one to every item in the Neo matrix. So Neo one is now equal to the original matrix plus one and all of those, and that will work if I multiply it by four. It's called Neo four is equal to Neo times four. And that scalar quantity is then um, operated on each of these numbers. If I wanted to add those two matrices together, I could create a new matrix, add them together. These names of, of um, variables are arbitrary. You can call them whatever you want. What matters is what's on the, the right hand side of the equal sign. So near trinity add. I could go Neo plus Trinity. If you want to add, subtract, you need to have 
the same number of rows and the same number of columns for your matrices. If we try and multiply these two matrices together, I'm going to call it Neo Trinity product because it's the multiplication. Watch what happens. It doesn't work. You can't multiply the same orientation of um, matrices together. So here we've got a 2 by 4 matrix and a 2 by 4 matrix. If you want to multiply matrices together, you have to ensure that the row number of one of the matrices matches the column number of the second matrix. In this case, all we have to do is perform an operation uh, called the transpose. So I'll just write it out. So we're going to transpose one of these matrices. I'm going to transpose Neo and put an inverted comma after it. So I'm going to call this Neo transposed. And then it's the same matrix, but what's happened? We now have four rows and two columns instead of two rows and four columns. The numbers are in the same order. It's just the rows and columns have switched. And this will now allow us to multiply these two values together. So if I do Trinity multiplied by Neo transposed, we can get the product of those matrices as they are multi multiplied together. You will be covering matrix algebra in uh, EG189 later on this semester. So you'll be going into depth about how you actually do that by hand, how those multiplications are made. If you're doing materials engineering, you probably won't see this until next year. In section 2.3, we look at plotting. So I'm going to go through the data in the first example in the plotting section. I'm going to create a new M file. I'll give it the name land speed record. And the two row vectors are given to you. And these are the dates for all the land speed records that have been achieved from 1898 when the land speed record was 39 miles per hour to the thrust SSC in 1997, which achieved a speed of 763 miles an hour. Swansea University is currently working on the Bloodhound project, which is an attempt to get a car up to 1,000 miles per hour. They're actually pretty close, and there should be an attempt next year. In the coursework you're doing, you'll be looking at more depth into that project, so you get to understand quite a bit about how it's going to work, because it's a good little project. Uh, okay, let's save that. Let's just clear the workspace. We don't need any of the last section and clear the screen. Plots are very, very easy. Depending on the one that you want to do. I could just have plot and then my x-axis first and my y second. So I'm going to do plot year comma speed record and save that. If I take this out of the M file for a second, put it in the command window and press enter. Oh, I haven't run the M file so it doesn't recognise it yet. So let's run the M file first and a plot will appear. It's actually appeared on my other window, so I'm just going to dock that over the workspace for now. No, let's bring it into here. So I've now plotted that data. I've got my x-axis data, which is the year, and the land speed record. I could plot it in different types, so I could plot it as a bar plot. I 
if we want to create a new figure and not overwrite the last one, I have to write figure. So I'll save that and run that. And it's going to create two figures. The plot there of the line and then a bar plot of the same one. We get quite a lot of nice controls for customizing these plots. I can change the thickness of the line, I can change the colour of the line, I can change uh, the style of markers. So another type of plot would be a scatter plot, and this would just be um, marked by markers. So let's save that and run that, and I'll show you all of those. Uh, so we have a screen, let me just bring it across. Now we've got the line, the bar, and a scatter plot. This last one, I would like to change this to, let's say, uh, red X's. Save that and run again. And now it's given me a scatter plot with red X's as markers instead of the blue circles. There are instructions in the workbook on how to format. You need to know how to format what the different symbols are for the colours for the symbols. Um, this will also come up in the coursework you're doing later on. The, syn the syntax you need to use is the plot command the x-axis data, the y-axis data, and then the format data. You also need to enclose the format data in inverted commas. It won't work if you take out the inverted commas. If I just copy this command down, you'll see what I mean. It doesn't understand. So you must always have those inverted commas in, in order to define it as a function. I could also plot a partial series of this data. Let's have, let's use scatter again. I'm going to get rid of all of these. And I only want to plot the years one, two, what should we say? One, two, three, four, five, six. One to six. Pre war years. So I'll do year, then I use the indices one to six. And I want to plot the indices one to six as speed record as well. Let me save that and run it. And it's now plotted those, only those six initial values that I asked for. Um, in your workbook, you've got an exercise at the end of the plot section. Make sure you can do that. It's all about changing your line types, making sure you can plot the right range of data. And it's also about getting x-axis and y-axis labels onto your diagram. These are all useful uh, tricks you need to know. But for now, that's it. Next um, week, we start looking at loops.